Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Ish. You're looking here at this evaluation video, sine hx, cosine hx, hyperbolic functions. We will individually evaluate them with regards to concavities and inflection point. We will look at hyperbolic cosine first. So let that be our first function that we evaluate, hyperbolic cosine. What do you want to do here first? How about we just do the first order derivative and we'll get a hyperbolic sine. You'll take this hyperbolic sine, you'll equal it to zero to see if there's a critical point which arises. Sine hx is equal to zero, x is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of that zero. Bring out your calculator, you can do a zero, inverse hyperbolic sine, and you get a value of zero. That tells you a critical point exists at an x-axis value of zero. When you plug that here in your original function, you're looking at hyperbolic cosine of zero. You can plug that in and you know you'll get a value of one. You can do that zero, hyperbolic cosine, you get a one. So you know you have a critical point present at a zero comma one. A critical point, and there it is. What can we do next? How about this? We do a second order derivative of hyperbolic cosine. It takes us back to our original function. Now you take this x-axis value and you plug it right here to see the character of that point. You're doing cosine h but you're doing a zero. And what are you gonna get here with regards to a sine? Just do zero, hyperbolic cosine, you get a positive one, but I'm looking here at a positive. That tells me my critical point over here is positive, so we're looking here at a relative or a local minimum. How about we just graph this out? When we're graphing this out, we're looking here at a zero comma one. We know hyperbolic cosine is a graph which looks something like this. If you were to do the first order derivative test and start plotting tangent lines, you would have lines which point downwards, you'll have minus, minus, you'll have a transition point here from a zero, and then you'll start looking upward sloping tangent lines, you'll go from a minus to a positive. When you go from a minus to a positive, you know you're looking here at a relative minimum or a local minimum, and that's exactly what we have. But how about an inflection point? And how about concavity? An inflection point will develop where the second order derivative changes sign or remember the most useful shortcut where the second order derivative is equal to zero if you were to solve for this x you'd get a zero here you know your second order derivative is your original function hyperbolic cosine a certain value x with regards to, to your hyperbolic cosine where you'd get a value of zero you'd have to do x is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of that zero and that's going to be a problem for us because when you do a zero and you do inverse hyperbolic cosine, you get an error. It's undefined. What does that undefined mean? It tells you that there is no inflection point. The hyperbolic cosine has no inflection point, and you can tell why it doesn't. There's no switch here from a concave up to a concave down, or a concave down to a concave up. You only have one type of concavity over here, and that's a concave up. You're looking here at a concave up, and you know clearly just by looking at this, the concave up, unless otherwise stated, has an interval here, minus infinity up to infinity with no inflection point. Your only point here is your local minimum point, a local or a relative extreme value here of a zero comma one. And that's about all you'll see over here. There's gonna be no inflection point. So the analysis or the evaluation of hyperbolic cosine is complete. A single critical point, which is your relative minimum, you have an interval here, minus infinity to infinity but there is no inflection point. Remember, you can have concavities here develop without the presence of an inflection point. You don't need to have an inflection point to have a concavity. You can have a concavity without an inflection point. Now let's look next at the hyperbolic sign. The hyperbolic sign is interesting. You're starting with that. Your first order derivative is going to be the hyperbolic cosine. You know you got to take the hyperbolic cosine from your first order derivative and look for a critical point. You can do cosine hx is equal to zero, and then you're gonna do x is equal to that and see what comes out. You do zero inverse hyperbolic cosine, and it's not defined. You're getting an error over here, you're getting an undefined. What does that tell you? That tells you there really is no critical point over here in the sense that you're gonna have a relative minimum or a relative maximum or a local extreme develop, you just want. But anyhow, let's look at the second order derivative of your sine h, your hyperbolic sine, you'll go back to your original function. Now, you can easily tell here, if you were to put a value here of zero into your hyperbolic sine, you'll get an output of zero. That tells you that the function goes to the origin. You know, in general, the hyperbolic sine looks something like this. And the zero comma zero very well goes through right over here. One thing we can do over here is look at the second derivative test. The second order derivative test can also be viewed as this. 
If your second order derivative with the placement of x-axis values is greater than zero or your second order der derivative with the placement of x-axis values is less than zero, the concavity here, when it's greater than zero, you're looking at a concave up. Here, you're looking at a concave down. When you're looking here at this second order derivative and you're looking at these minus values in terms of x and here you have positive x, you can see what would happen when you put zero in place of your hyperbolic sign, you're obviously getting a zero. When you, when you start putting negative values in place of your hyperbolic sign, you get a negative output in terms of your second order derivative, which happens to be your original function. But when you put like positive values into your hyperbolic sign, you get positive outcomes. That tells you with regards to the second order derivative, negative values will create a, a situation which is less than zero. Positive values will create a situation which is greater than zero. And you could essentially view something like this, and then you could view something like this. So that is telling you something very interesting, but let's put this aside for a minute. We'll focus here again. The area where your hyperbolic sign or your second order derivative is equal to zero will clue you in onto your inflection point. You have a sine h, x is equal to zero, and then x is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of that zero. Take your zero inverse hyperbolic sine and you get a value of zero. When you take your value, x axis value of zero, put in your original function, you're getting a zero comma zero. Zero comma zero is your inflection point over here because it's at the value where you have generated this situation right here to be true. It is also a situation here where, let's come back to here, a supposed concavity down changes to a concavity up. From here to right here up to the inflection point, you have an appearance of a concavity down. From the inflection point going after that, you have appearance of a concavity up. So if you're looking here at a concavity down interval, you're looking at minus infinity up to your zero value of your inflection point right over here. If you're looking at a concavity up, you're looking here from then that zero up to infinity. So this hyperbolic sign, if you talk about the first derivative test, what are you seeing? You're seeing positive tangent lines and then you're seeing positive tangent lines. You're not seeing a shift from a positive to a minus or a minus to positive, which would help confirm a local or a relative extreme. You don't have a local or relative extreme because this original critical point never developed. The first order derivative test confirms that there's no local extreme, but utilizing the second order derivative tests, you can see that we have concave up or and concave down or concavity up, concavity down situation arise over here. And we do have an inflection point here. And remember what I've shown you here for this and here, this has a true relative minimum and it has a true concavity up in terms of you have a clear concavity. This right here has a true, you can say it's still a true concavity down and a concavity up, but it also has a very true inflection point. It just lacks any local extreme or a relative extreme. And let that be the lesson for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.